worship and end up with our Christmas stuff. We will with our message of hope tonight. So why don't you guys stand and worship us here.
guys for coming in in this cold weather. You're all feeling better than I am. <laughs> I will keep my distance. <laughs> so with the Christmas spirit, I thought we would talk about hope tonight. And when I was looking at this and I was preparing, I thought I was going to be talking about the hope of the newborn Savior. And God and his irony is he always, when you're studying the Bible, always brings you to new things. And it's, it actually brought me around to something I was already studying, so I thought that was kind of a cool way that he did it. So when I started looking at this, I have 1 Peter um, chapter 3, verse 15, and it says, Always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give the reason for the hope that you have. And so when we talk about hope, the hope is in the Webster um, Dictionary. It says it's a desire accompanied by expectation of or belief in its fulfillment, or to expect with confidence, to trust something. And then biblically, um, biblical definition would be confident expectation of what God has promised and its strength is in his faithfulness to bring it about. So when I was looking at this, I realized that hope doesn't come by itself. It actually comes in part of a trio with faith, faith, hope, and love. And hope comes by the way of faith. Galatians 5, 5 tells us that through the Spirit we eagerly await by faith the righteousness for which we hope. And what is our faith? Our faith is a trust in God. He is who he says he is. That he keeps his promises. That we have life in Jesus in heaven with God for all eternity and nothing can take that from us. And without our faith, there is no basis for hope because there's no future no promise. Our hope is not empty. It's not unfulfilled longing that we just hope something is going to be there, that we want it to be true. And it's not some vague concept of heaven or the floating around in the clouds with the cute little chairs that we see, you know. We actually have hope in something real. We have hope in Jesus a real person. We have eyewitness testimonies in the Bible about his birth, his ministry, his death, and his resurrection. And we have proof, proof of his power and his Holy Spirit. First Peter 1, verses 3-9. through 9. Sorry, this gets a little long, but I'm going to read it to you guys. Praise be to God and the Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, and his great mercy has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, and into an inheritance that can never perish, spoil, or fade. This inheritance is kept for us in heaven. For you, who through faith are shielded by God's power until the coming of salvation, that is ready to be revealed at the last time. In all this you greatly rejoice, though now for a little while you may have to suffer grief and all kinds of trials. These have come so that, to prove, so that the proven genuineness of your faith, of greater worth than gold, which perishes even though refined by fire, may result in praise, glory, and honor when Jesus is revealed. Though you have not seen him, you love him. Even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and are filled with inexpressible and glorious joy. For you are receiving the end result of your faith, the salvation of your souls. So the result of our faith is our salvation. And this is our hope. So we have faith first, and then we have hope. And then love is the natural outcome of this faith and hope. It's the fruit, it's the proof that the faith and hope are real and healthy. You know, in 1 Corinthians 13, everyone knows this, it talks about love is patient and kind, it does not envy, it does not boast, it is not proud, it is not dishonorable to others, it's not self-seeking, it's not easily angered, it keeps no records of wrong. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. So love always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. So when I was thinking of this, it came up with this tree idea, the, the tree of faith, hope, and love. And faith is like the root system. It's deep and wide. It goes down to get the nourishment from the ground. And it also gives it the strength when the storms come by. Because if it has the deep roots, it's not going to be knocked down. The trees that have the shallow roots that just go along the top, and the wind comes along, and they always get knocked over. And if you think about hope being the trunk and the branches that reach up, they're always um, attached to the root, and they're always seeking the way up to the sun. As you went, as I went. <laughs> That's kind of cool. Um, and always striving. And then love is the leaves and the fruit and the flowers that come on this tree. It's what fills in the tree. It's what gives it beauty. It's what reveals its purpose. If the root and the body are good, the leaves and the flowers and the fruit are good. But if the root is bad, then the tree dies and produce, or produces no fruit. And the love shows you what kind of tree it is, the fruit. What purpose does a tree have if it doesn't produce what it was created for? So if we don't have the, the basis of faith and the hope and the love, we have love without the hope and the faith. We don't have anything. 
So like termites that can get into the hollow, of the, into the base of the tree and hollow it out, there are things in our lives that kill hope. It can be the lack of knowledge just of the promises of God. If you don't read your Bible, if you don't go to church, if um, you're not listening to things that tell you what God's word is, then you don't have that understanding of what that hope is. If you're trusting in yourself or worldly things instead of God. Anxiety, worry, depression, suicidal thoughts, anger, unforgiveness, bitterness, resentment, hanging out with the wrong crowd. I know that sounds silly when we're adults, but really if you're surrounding yourself with people who are anti-God or very pessimistic or don't have a good outlook, we kind of, you take on that. You kind of become the people that you hang out with. It can also mean holding out traditions or false beliefs or other religions or incorporating other religions into your belief system and kind of picking and choosing what you want instead of what the truth of God's word is. And then there's always refusing hope too, just because you know when people get hurt, you kind of put up those walls to protect you. And some people don't want to hope because they don't want to be let down. And so when you don't have that hope too, then it can lead to all these other areas. Philippians 1 6 tells us, being confident of this, that he who has begun a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Jesus Christ. Um, so we know that our hope is in Jesus, and we know that. And when somebody asks you, well, you know, why do you believe in God? Why do you have all these feelings? Um, it brought me back to, I've been studying the book of Ephesians all this last year, and it was kind of interesting. God, um, Josh asked the whole church to go through the book of the Bible, and I've been stuck in one <laughs> all year. But it's a good book. So I kind of wanted to go through some of my notes quick um, that I had written down from Ephesians chapter 1 and chapter 2. I kind of just wrote a summary of what the book was talking about. And what it does is it just reinforces um, what we already believe and why we believe what we believe. Um, so it says, God has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in heaven. He has chosen us to be holy and blameless in love. He has predestined us for adoption into his family. And we are accepted into his family by Jesus Christ, his beloved. We have redemption through Jesus' blood. We have forgivenesses of sins through, through grace. We have obtained an inheritance, and we are sealed by the Holy Spirit. And then Paul goes on, he's got a prayer for believers, and he talks about how may God give us the spirit of wisdom and revelation and knowledge in him. May our eyes of our understanding, our hearts be opened, and that we may know the love of his calling, that the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints and the exceeding greatness of his power. And then he goes on to talk about how Christ was raised from the dead, seated on the throne in the heavenlies, about all principalities, powers, might, and dominion, in every name, ever. All things are under his feet, and he has a head over all the church and the church body. And then through Christ, starting in chapter 2, talks about in Christ, we are made alive, raised up with him, and seated in the heavenlies with him, because we have that inheritance. For we are his workmanship, created in Jesus Christ for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should work in them. We were once outsiders, unwelcome strangers, with no hope and no God. But through Jesus, we now have both. In the, one of the other things, too, that was kind of interesting, when I found in 1 Thessalonians 5.8, it says, Since we belong to the day, let us be sober, putting on faith and love as a breastplate, and the hope of salvation as a helmet. And later on in Ephesians chapter 6, it talks about the armor of God. And really talked about um, the belt of truth and the, and the breastplate of righteousness, which Thessalonians also said was faith and love. Um, our feet fitted for the gospel of peace, the shield of faith, and the helmet of salvation. And First Thessalonians was saying it's the hope of salvation is our helmet. And then the sword of the spirit. That was kind of a neat little side thing, so I'm really distracted on that. <laughs> But, um, so as we see, that when somebody asks us what is the basis for our hope, and we can tell them these things, and we can point to the Bible, we can say, just read the book of Ephesians, it tells everything, it tells us why Jesus was sent, and how he was sent, and how we are children of God, according to that, and that's who we place our hope in. Our hope isn't in things, it's not in, in, um, things that can fade away, but it's actually in a living person, in the living person of Jesus Christ. I think I had, I had one more quote on there. Um, Charles Finney wrote a book called True Christ Christianity. It says, God never permits anything to occur in his universe unless he extracts some good from it, overruling his influence and making the correction and punish punishment of it a means of good. So, you know, some people get that distorted view of God where they think God is out to punish, but that's not, that's not God. 
if you're feeling shame and guilt and conviction, and maybe not conviction, but and feeling that bad stuff, that's not from God. Because God takes everything. He can take anything and make it into good. And what the devil meant for bad, he turned around and used Jesus to turn into great, into the salvation. And that's what we put our hope in. We got some more songs. Is anybody that wants to come up? We'll finish with some. <laughs> Mikkel, sorry, I've got to buy a different name today. <laughs> so we're going to finish with singing some more Christmas songs. And just, you know, basing these things on, on Jesus and on the birth of Christ and just celebrating the season and the hope that we have in him. You guys have a stand as you can. Jesus. We thank you in his name.